Hello guys! Welcome to Top Anime Sensei. In this video we will talk about the tournament final and the dungeon opening. So if you like the video please subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. So without any further delay let's start. If any suspicious personnel come up to mediate, I shall investigate his activities and expose his background, Soy kneeling next to me said. I didn't even realize he was there. I suppressed my shock and nodded rather pretentiously. You scared me. You didn't even make a sound. I've told you before, your majesty. The residents here are far too inhuman. Visiting here yourself is far too dangerous. Kakuku, but that was quite the intriguing experience. By the way, Rimuru-san, could I ask you a question? Hmm? What does she want to know at this point? Right, ask away? I would like to form an alliance with you, but before that, I would like to hear your thoughts. The aura emitted by Elmija suddenly changed. She was looking straight at me without any intention of hiding her prowess as a ruler. An immense pressure ensued that was almost suffocating for everyone at the scene, even Gazel was no match for her. This was, Hero's Haki. Do tell. Given this to be the case, I began to use my, Demon Lord's Haki, against her as well. We stared at each other to battle it out with our sights. I wished to confront her directly, so I did not flinch as I looked right at Elmija. What do you plan to do with that demon? That most dangerous primordial? Primordial? Although I'm not sure what Elmija is on about, was the demon referring to Diablo? He's indeed strong, but he's definitely not most dangerous, right? Nothing, I'm not planning to do anything. Diablo has been very satisfying working under me, is there a problem? Allow me to ask differently then. If that demon loses control, how do you plan to take responsibility? Lose control? He did concern me with that. Even this had been seen through by Elmija, you could tell just how concerned I had been. Indeed, it wouldn't be strange for Diablo to lose control at any time. But that wasn't just a problem unique to Diablo. Despite my unwillingness to admit, I also have the troubled child that is Sheehan. She seemed to be concerned about me, but that was probably no problem for Elmija-san to take care of. Well, about that. I will stop him before he loses control. That's all I can do to prevent casualties, isn't it? If there's any other way, please enlighten me. I could only try to intervene before he lost control. Diablo seemed rather happy that I said so. Huh? Hey, hold on? Ignore my accidental transformation back to my own self, but did you just say you are going to stop that demon? And take responsibility? Right. He's indeed quite prone to losing control, but lately he's been listening to my words and has been better behaving lately, I answered with confidence. Diablo and Sheehan, if they kept where they were right now, there shouldn't be anything to worry about. Although Sheehan said so seemingly excluding herself, it made me uneasy. But all in all, there shouldn't be any concern. Hearing my answer, a girlish smile emerged on Elmija's face. Hey, Elalud Chan, did you hear? Demon Lord Rimuru's got some bearing, he's got a lot more grandeur than you. Isn't this enough Elmija Dono? Rimuru has spoken, he has my support as well. If anything happens, I. Gazel Dwargon promised to lend Rimuru my aid. Showing a sense of reliance I had not seen for a long time. Gazel verbally supported me. Elmija peeked at us pleasantly. And next. I've understood your view on the matter. But if you are to stand against humanity, I shall stop you with all I have. I hope that we will be able to maintain a good relationship and deepen the bond between our nations. Elalude. Yes ma'am. I've approved the alliance between Sorcerer's Dynasty Sarian and Jura Tempest Federation. Go handle the rest of the procedure. Yes ma'am. As expected from an emperor, the way she ordered Elalude was filled with majesty. I need to pick up a thing or two from her. Then, if anything goes wrong, just come find me or Gazel Chan. Don't you lose control now Tilda Elmija said to me. I don't get it. Weren't we just talking about Diablo and Sheehan losing control? And somehow the topic landed on me, telling me not to lose control. How rude. I mean, despite how I look, I'm very considerate when doing planning. Don't put it that way as if I'm gonna lose control that easily. Rimuru, who was it that started this festival? Gazel was staring at me. If you ask me, I could only answer. Me of course. I think it's Muir Miles Kuhn? Huh, that's not true at all. He didn't want to comply. Okay, fine. I get it, I'll negotiate with people properly next time. That's the spirit, I'll be counting on you. After solving the money issue, the conference somehow became a gathering to scold me. But I'd let it pass. The hard topic was over. Now that I'd had my agreement with Elmija, we would be building a good relationship between our nations in the future. 
I was going to dismiss the conference just before Elmija wanted to continue. Unsure as to what she wanted, I asked nervously as well. A, is there any other problem? No no no, no problem at all. It's a personal request. Please introduce me to Master Yoshida. Hold on, your majesty, what are you on about now? That's just shameless to ask right now. Seeing how panicked Elalude looked, I imagined it was nothing severe. Yoshida-san came to our nation at the request of Shuna. I personally hoped that he would remain in our nation, but that ultimately depended on Yoshida-san. If it was just introducing him to Elmija, that shouldn't be a problem. Easy peasy. But, please don't force Yoshida-san to do anything, I answered Elmija without hesitation. That is most certain. Elmija was happy to accept as well, we would introduce them after the celebration. And so, the meeting of the big three quietly concluded. Chapter 4, Tournament Final and the Dungeon Opening. On the third morning of the founding festival, I set off to the Dwarven Kingdom in order to exchange our star gold coins for gold coins. Now that our problem had been resolved, we would have to see how the conspirators would react. With this done, I had nothing else to worry about, so I could just enjoy the celebration. We would be starting the day with the final battle between Masayuki and Gabta. The stands were packed with anticipation and people were all enthusiastic about making their predictions about who would be the winner and some even opened up a betting pool. Miles was hoping to make the most of this by making the only winning play. Be the guy running the business, no matter your prediction, you'd still make money. This is the secret to any gambling operation. I put my money on Gabta, mainly to make some more pocket change, not because I expected to win. That was irrelevant, the important thing was to give Gabta my support. Next, we are finally entering the final. Which contestant will be crowned the champion? Will it be Shining Masayuki, or the Chibi Warrior Gabta, who's fighting for his place among the four heavenly kings? Soka's broadcast was on point as well. If Gabta beat Masayuki, all the problems would be resolved. But if Masayuki turned out to be just as strong as Hanada, Gabta would have no chance of winning. Ultimately, no matter the outcome, I would be able to obtain some information about that swordsman, if Masayuki fell into a hard battle against Gopta, I could at least confirm that he was not going to pose any threat. Moreover, Gopta's natural good luck was combined with the presence of Ranga. On stage, Soka finished introducing the two contestants smoothly. With that, the match began. Alright, time to see what percentage of Masayuki's strength Gopta was going to force him to reveal. After watching the battle between Gozer and Mezer yesterday, and knowing that Masayuki had to fight against the winning contestant of that match, I'm done for. Fighting against a monster like that. I'm gonna get slaughtered. When he managed to trick Gozer with his speech and got him to give up the match, Masayuki really wanted to praise himself, but upon seeing the match afterward, Masayuki was plunged into despair yet again. How am I supposed to win? What the hell, are all the participants in this martial tournament actual monsters? The constant praise as a hero, a chosen hero no less, and his overconfidence in his companion's abilities, had led him into a complacent mindset, and as a result, Masayuki thought he could have an easy life, with minimal effort, and easily eliminate any hurdles in his way. No, he just never bothered to put much thought into it. Without much proof, he just went around arrogantly believing his squad was invincible and that they could defeat whatever enemies they encountered, it was this thought that kept Masayuki composed internally. But, how the hell can I hold on to such an ignorant delusion now? I want to run. I want to run away from this place. Yo, Masayuki-san. After winning tomorrow's tournament, are you going to duel the Demon Lord right after? Jinrai asked casually. It was all Demon Lord Rimuru's fault. It was all because of the Demon Lord's gentle and fragile appearance, that Masayuki let his guard down. Or else he would have acted more cautiously for the sake of self-preservation. It's only a matter of time. Masayuki-sama will defeat the Demon Lord and save this kingdom. Before fighting the Demon Lord, should we perhaps discuss this with Yuki-san? We should, nonetheless remain vigilant, despite the easy win today, we don't want to lose tomorrow's match out of carelessness. Bonnie, my man, how is that even possible? Lion Mask might have been dangerous, but that hobgoblin named Gopta should be a piece of cake, the match will be over before he can summon that troublesome beast. Easy my ass. Masayuki had absolutely no clue how to fight these enemies, all he could think about was how he was going to get crushed, but after seeing the faith his companions had in him, he couldn't bear to tell them his genuine thoughts, with that being the case, he forced out a simple, I'll just try my best. Uh, what do I do? How can I make it back alive? 
Aren't goblins supposed to be the weakest kind of monster? How did he evolve to become so strong? And now, we will witness the very first Tempest Martial Tournament finale. On one side, we have the fierce warrior, Lieutenant of Demon Lord Rimuru and young captain of the Goblin Riders, Gobta. His opponent, the hero of the Western Nations, the shining chosen hero, Masayuki. What sort of match will they show us? Turn your sight to the center of the stage, what an intense stare down. The match will begin in. Masayuki knew that as soon as she finished her announcement, the match would kick off. Damn it, I don't have much time left. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you guys have not watched the previous parts, then please watch them. The links are in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates.